Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look at and cleaning some of the books that I picked up during the month of October. So it's quite a nice little selection here and I do hope you enjoy it. So sit back, relax and get ready for the October pickups video. So as you can see, there is a lot of books here today. Um, a lot of them are by Edgar Wallace and a lot of them are by Hammond Innes. Now, uh, I have picked up over the last sort of couple of months or so um, some books from a chap who is selling them on the, well, basically the chap's uncle died and um, it fell to this chap to uh, dispose of his rather massive book collection so I've been buying what I can when I've had the chance and not everything is for me some of it is really sort of obscure and titles that I don't want some of it's just hardbacks and I don't want them at all in most cases um, but what I have picked up has been great in the fact that a lot of it has been in really really great condition so as you can see there's a fair bit to get through here today um, but a lot of it is not going to need any sort of cleaning at all because it's just absolutely fine so we've got about four piles of it if we just get rid of this sort of hardback first of all so you might recognize this as the first volume in the flashman papers uh, by george mcdonald fraser now i'm a huge fan of these books there's only about 12 in the series this is the first one but it's actually a facsimile edition of the first book now i didn't even know they'd done a facsimile of it but i guess i shouldn't really be surprised um yeah, jacket designed by A.E. Barbosa, $14.99. And this one came out initially in 1969 and the facsimile edition published in 2014. Now, I do have the original edition of this one and it's absolutely brilliant. If you've never dipped your toe into the Flashman books, um, I do recommend it. Flashman was, of course, the uh, the bad guy from uh, Tom Brown's school days. And... Uh, the first edition hardback of this, particularly in nice condition with a sort of unfaded spine, is quite an expensive book. So this is a lovely way to get that first volume uh, on your shelf. Although, in actual fact, I think the second one, Royal Flash, is actually uh, a tad harder to get. Um, but anyway, that's that one. Absolutely nothing more. It's an unread copy, so nothing I need to do on that one. So the first then of uh, many Edgar Wallace books uh, published by Hodder. Now, I've got some Edgar Wallace in my collection, which were published by Pam, and I've also got some in my collection that were published by Digit. But Hodder paperbacks, as a publisher, I don't actually collect. Um, there may be odd ones in my collection that I've decided to keep, sort of like horror anthologies, for example, um, but I don't really own a lot of them. Um, so consequently, so this is a, a prime example. This is a nice early Hodder book. Um, this particular edition was published... 1957. It's not the first, but it's it's a nice 50s copy of it. And as you can see, that's been bought from new. It's probably been read just the once, and that's it, and it's been stored. And that is, there's no marks inside. It's not been through the secondhand sort of book system. And that exemplifies what this uh, what these books have been like that I bought from this collection, and that have been in absolutely superb condition. So that literally needs nothing except what I will do at the end is just put a bit of polish over it just to sort of clean it up. But these hotter ones on the whole are just going to be heading to uh, to eBay. Now, I have been selling a few books on eBay of late. Obviously, I've got all those spare pan books that I've been shifting. And uh, I'll just pop the link to my eBay auctions in the description down below so you can go directly there. And if you do end up buying something for, from my page or even any eBay in general, That'll be absolutely fine because it will give the channel a bit of a bit of a boost. So once again, that's another another one that doesn't need any sort of internal workings to it. Now this one's from Arrow Books, and Arrow's another publisher that I'm not massively uh, a big fan of. I've got a couple of horror ones in my collection. Um, the only real author that I enjoyed. Uh, you know, who was published in Arrow is Dennis Wheatley and I have got a few of those in my collection but nowhere near all of them because um, they're very tough to find in first edition this is a really nice uh, 50s sort of crime one when the gangs came to London 
nice that one this one has been read a few times by the look of it um but still in nice shape 1959 and as you'll see there was a hell of a run of edgar wallace in here the missing million yeah so i'm not a huge fan of arrow i have to say a pan sign on the back there um, yeah, not a massive fan of them. I don't mind them, but they just... See, that's an arrow first, that one from 1961. They just don't feel as nice in the hand to read. Now, in actual fact, I'm toying with the idea of just popping a bit of glue on the spine there. I think I will, because you see it's just popped away there. So I will just put a little blob of glue using my screwdriver into the empty little gap there just to sort of sort that bit out because it is a little bit unsightly. But yeah, I've had lots of emails of people, you know, particularly since I got that big pan collection, uh, what are you doing with all the doubles? And I said, well, they're just on eBay. There's no way I've got the space to keep multiples of, of books that I already own. I've barely got space for the ones that I want to keep. So there we are. That just keeps that from getting any worse. Um, so, yeah, if you are interested in a few doubles, um, some of my doubles or books that I don't actually want to keep, um, just hop onto the eBay link down below and that'll help out. Um, the mixer, that's not one I remember. Once again, the spine's gone on this one, so I'm going to put some glue in the spine there. Yeah, I don't mind it, Gorlis, I have to say, but when I tried to read a few of his quite recently they were remarkably old-fashioned i was thought oh, i'm not i'm not enjoying these at all um, the one called the forger is good because that's more a look at a profession almost rather than a story but because these were fairly contemporary when they were written they have not aged very well and you have to sort of look at it Looking at it with today's eyes, they do, they, they've not, they've just not aged very well, unfortunately. Unlike some, there we are. So that's actually come up quite nicely, that. It wasn't, it was pretty much falling off there. So that's, that's okay. We'll give that one a time to dry off. But that was worth doing. This is interesting. So this is from the, the true crime, a true crime mystery, the murder on Yarmouth Sands by Edgar Wallace and other true tales of suspense. So this is like a true true crime mystery from Key Books. I haven't got any of these in my collection. Noons, they were a publisher. Key Books number 10. Look at that. That's quite interesting, that, isn't it? I wonder when this is like early 60s by the look of it, or late 50s, or is it even dated? True crime. Yeah, it doesn't look like this one's dated, but my estimate would be, like a lot of these books, late 50s, early 60s. That's really interesting, isn't it? You see it's got like a laminate cover on the front there. It's starting to peel off there. I could theoretically just pull that right off like an old Dell matte back, but I'd rather leave it on because apart from the little bit of curling in there, it's, it's done its job and really sort of protected the book. So I'm quite pleased with that one. It's unusual. I haven't got any of those in my collection. I won't keep it because, as I said, I don't really collect Edgar Wallace as an author, um, just for uh, his pan books. So here's a slightly later arrow. Edgar Wallace, The Avengers. This is uh, one of those like late 60s photographic covers, which is how the trend went. They went from artwork to photography. And that one's got a sticker on the back. So let's see if it's worth that. Uh, yeah, 1967, this one. I'm going to have a little look to see if I can get this um, this sticker off. It doesn't look like it's going to give me too much trouble. I'm just using the edge of the finger now, just to sort of tease it off here bit by bit. And like any sticker removal, patience is the key. And... It's like there, you see it's coming up a little bit. I'm going to go around the other side now. Pop it down there, because I've already got it started. I'm going to go around this side now. 
going to try to uh, tear it, tease it off from this end, and then the two will meet, and then that back cover will be looking a lot better than it was looking beforehand. There we are. So that's got the sticker off, but there's a little bit of sticker residue there. So what I shall do, I'm going to leave this one to one side because I know that when we get to the polishing stage, that one's going to need a little bit of extra polish. So I'm going to pop that one over that side. Here's another arrow here, the man from Morocco. A nice cover, actually, that one. Looking through the grill there. He's got like a dagger in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, certainly Edgar Wallace has got his fans. 1961, but although this is a 1961, it's made to look like, at the time, contemporary crime. Um, this book, The Man from Morocco, was first published, if I didn't, if I read that correctly. It was first published in 1926, and that is why these books are so dated and they haven't aged very well. It's just because of when they were first written. Um, another nice hotter one here, The Brigand. Completely different style of jacket there. Fifties one. Now these are two, a bit of a change of pace here. Here's a couple of early James Herbert books. Now I remember absolutely loving this one uh, as a kid when it was. It wasn't when it was published because uh, that was uh, about nineteen seventy five. I think the paperback. Well, the, this first paperback was seventy four. Um, this is the first edition of this one. It's actually a hard paperback to get in an, uh, a nail first, New English Library. Absolutely fantastic. Um, the author there, W.F. Uh, Phillips, I think is the chap. Um, I do actually have an original cover by this chap for, her. sadly, not this this iconic book. That would have been lovely, but one of his like Roman history ones. Um, it's really, really nice. So I'm going to... Um, uh, finish that set off and I'm gonna gonna do a video on that because it's I don't have much cover artwork but that's one of the bits I do have. Um this is an absolutely fantastic book. Um they call it the Rats trilogy but there was actually four books in it. There was the Rats, the Lair and Domain and then there was one called The City which came out as a as a graphic novel. Um really, really good this if you've never read the Rats, it's just excellent. I mean it's a real page turner. Um Absolutely great. This, I love the logo there. Like they've used that was on the original hardback as well. Um, yeah, I really like James Herbert. He's a, he's a great guy. I've got most of them, but I wanted there was a few I didn't have in first edition. Now, this is not a great copy, it's not bad, but it, it's so scarce. I just wanted to grab one, so I've got that. And at the same time, I did pick up the first of the lair, which is the, the follow up, uh, the sequel to the, to the rats. If anything, is a little more gory. Um, I certainly remember as a kid, I was about 11 or 12, and we were on a, a family, this is July 79, we were on a family holiday to Jersey, and um, I remember Domain had just come out, and I remember going into WH Smith's and picking up a copy of, of Domain. In fact, there's even a photo of me reading it on holiday. <laughs> um, Another thing I got this month was a few hard case crime. I picked up another little job lot, only one of which was a double. So these are all mint and unread copies. And it's just five more to add to the collections. This is hard case crime number six. The Confession, Dominic Stansbury. I've got these really cheap, like about two, three pound each. Lester Dent, Honey in His Mouth. Beautiful jacket, that one. By Lesser. This is a... An unusual choice for a hard case crime, uh, The Valley of Fear. Obviously, Arthur Conan Doyle. Still great in these A-format paperbacks. I do love them. That's a great jacket as well. George Axelrod, Blackmailer by the author of The Seven Year Itch. What a great cover. Orbic did the cover to that one. That's beautiful, isn't it? And the last one I got was this one by Richard Elias. Songs of Innocence, a John Blake mystery. Orbic cover again. So five more hard case crime into the library. I reckon I've got over half the hard case crime books now, which is pretty cool. Um, 
one thing we should do as we go along is just give the jackets a bit of a, sorry, the top edges a bit of a dust off. So let me go and get my duster. Here we are. So I don't think these hard case crime are going to need much because they're pretty much, as you can see, nice and uh, nice and fresh. But it doesn't hurt because sometimes on these, you just can't see the dust. It's uh, sort of invisible, isn't it? But they're okay. Okay, so let's give these paperbacks a go. Now these are a bit older, so they may well have a bit of dust on them. And they do, to be honest. And also, I've noticed the top of this one actually needs a bit of glue on it as well, so. Let me just do that now, just using the screwdriver again. It's a really easy way to apply just a tiny bit of glue to a specific spot, like so. So we're not overdoing it, we're just putting just enough there, just so it's got enough to stick it down carefully and stop it getting any worse. And that's all we're really trying to do here is to uh, Stop the books getting any worse than they already are. So they're good enough for another person to read and enjoy. Quite a bit of dust on the earlier. Edgar Wallace is there, as you would expect. This one was pretty clean, actually, so I don't think... There's hardly anything on that at all. So that's absolutely fine. So that's the first little sort of wedge done. Yeah, I was very pleased to get those uh, James Herberts. If you've never read them, they come recommended, I have to tell you. All right, let's pop them over there. Next pile then. So well, we start off with an odd Doctor Who. So I'm still trying to get a full set of all the Doctor Who books uh, from Target in first edition. Um, I'm not that far off now. I think it's about maybe 15 tops, and then I've got the full set of 150 odd in first Target edition. And I have been super picky with my condition. I do only want these in really sort of nice nick. Um, this one's absolutely fine, but it's the first one I've got in ages. I've got to admit, I've um, been concentrating on other things lately. Um, you know, you can't collect everything at once, and sometimes, you know, you sort of get excited about one thing and then you move to another thing, you know, I'm sure you know how it is. Um, and it's also having the time to hunt particular books out. I found with the Doctor Who's, it's been quite tricky because people put them up who aren't really, say, a book dealers, so they don't know what printings of a witch and things like that. And that does make it a bit more time consuming because you've got to send off um, messages, you know, saying, oh, which printing is this? And, um, you know, why haven't you taken a photograph of the spine? I need to see what the spine condition's like. Um, white face. All London is asking, who is the man called Whiteface? So, yeah, so I've not been moving that swiftly on the uh, on the Doctor Who front. Um, and I've not sort of bought any collections lately, which um, has meant I've been able to go through and uh, sort of have many doubles to pick through. But there was a point where I was uh, I was getting quite a bit. Same with the Star Trek books, in actual fact. Um, here's another harder one, The Feathered Serpent. And as I said, as you can see, these these books are just in great shape, aren't they? You know, they've just, they, it's almost like they've got a particular feel about them where they've been bought from you, read just the once, and boom, into the, into the library. Look at that. Mr. J.G. Reader Returns. And these are typical of the 1950s uh, books, although these were, in a lot of cases, published a little bit earlier. Um, well, this was, does say, 1965, in that they're short little books, 150 pages or so. Traitor's Gate. As I said, um, a lot of these I won't be keeping. They shall just end up going on eBay. But I didn't want to miss the chance to show you the process of me going through them, checking them and cleaning them. 
see this one here, Sanders, this does end up as a digit a few years later. So I'm not sure if uh, Edgar Wallace was another one who sort of bandied his, his rights around to the highest bidder. I don't know. Um, these are the slightly earlier Potter and Stoughton yellow jackets. I got a few of these again, the three. So these are slightly earlier. So this has got C114. That's like the series number and distinctive when they name the, the two shilling yellow jackets here. I almost prefer these to uh, this 1952 to the uh, the later 50s ones. They are a bit bigger, but they have a very, very distinctive look to them, don't they? I mean, they really, really do. They really stand out. And I suppose this was Hodder and Stanton's way of making them stand out on the bookshelves. Because it was a very, at this time, it, you know, post Second World War, it was an extremely busy time on the bookshelves. So there was publishers cropping up everywhere. There we are, the green archer. Look at that. And these are, I've got to say, these are nice, nice copies. These, I wonder if these are, you know, the same thing. He just bought them from new and, and just put them on the shelf once he read them into his collection. 1953. Looks like it, doesn't it? They look such nice condition. The Crimson Circle. Let's have a look at the back on this one. So this is some of the other authors that were published around this time. Sapper there, I recognise. Victor Canning. A few Eric Amler. Obviously, the Saint books came out as hotter ones. I don't have many of those. Um, the only Saint books I've got are the Pan editions, which I do absolutely love. And I believe Pan, come the end, pretty much published the whole lot. Um, all the Leslie Charteris. And um, someone has said, oh, Jules, please, can you do a feature on pa on the Saint in Pan books? And that one's definitely on the way. The Three Just Men. This one's interesting. Look, it's got the blue edges, and that's where it's been sprayed, possibly because it was remaindered. God, look at this. Very, pretty dirty, isn't it? 1950, so it's just an earlier edition. I can't believe Look at the dirt in it. Wow. What were we saying about this collection being in this cup? I mean, in such nice condition. That is crazy. Wow. God, that's, that's really dirty. Need to do this part when the wife is not around, so I can get the Hoover out afterwards. <laughs> wow, how interesting! It is. It is. I've got to admit, 1950 is one of the earliest ones in the collection that, uh, that we've got today. In fact, um, I wonder if the back cover is equally as bad. <sighs> no, the back cover is all right, but. That was certainly looking a little bit worse for wear, that one. So anyway, let's give these top edges a clean. Now I know. Some of my viewers love these sort of book cleaning videos because of the uh, the unintentional ASMR sounds of cleaning books and what, what that makes. And for those people, I say hello and welcome. I was uh, the channel, one of the videos on the channel was featured on an unintentional ASMR YouTube channel. I think it was called Pure Unintentional ASMR. And the chap who runs it is actually a big retro gaming fan. And he'd had a couple of people say to him, oh, you know, you need to do these book videos from Jules. They're really like, look, got lots of ASMR tingles and triggers, I think they call it. So he reached out to me and I was featured on that channel. And, uh, Certainly, it's brought a lot of people to check us out. So even if you're not here for the book repair, I do hope you enjoy the ASMR qualities of it. There we are. So, 
once those ones wiped. I think I'll do these in two two parts. So one thing I have got in the repair department, as you recall, I did a great repair on um, Forbidden Planet, the 1950s sci-fi classic. I had an old Corgi edition of that one, which I've been after for years, and it was in a right state. It was in pieces, and uh, thankfully it came up really, really nice, so I was really pleased with it. I do have a similar task ahead of me with a copy of Lucky Jim. Now, Lucky Jim was the first book that was published by Kingsley Amos, and he's an author I really like, uh, particularly his early stuff. Um, and Lucky Jim is, because it was the author's first book, it was a real 20th century classic, copies in a really nice dust wrapper are regularly changed hands for four figures. I mean, they are a thousand pounds plus. So I couldn't do that, but most of Kingsley Amos's books I do already own in first edition, all in their original wrappers, um, just not Lucky Jim. So I've been on the lookout for Lucky Jim for ages, absolutely ages. And lo and behold, a copy finally turned up, which I picked up, including postage, for £25. Now, it had been massively well read. It was dusty, dirty. It's got a spine roll on it that you wouldn't believe, and it's got no dust jacket. Across the top, it's even got cobwebs in there. So it's it is definitely in a, in a state. In fact, a bit like this one, this is in a bit of a state as well. Um, but I have a new facsimile jacket on the way from the States, and I'm going to do a, a, a repair job on it. And it will be similar to the repair job on Forbidden Planet. It'll be multi-staged, and it's going to be a real job, but... I think it's going to come up quite nicely. And I am going to be using, because uh, it's heavily foxed on the edges, I'm going to try and uh, get some of that off if I can. Now, this one here is borderline whether it can be saved, because this is right in the middle of the book. And I don't think it's going to, just by gluing it, it's going to make much, much difference. So I don't know. I mean, I'm going to put some glue in and then leave it for a couple of days just to see how it goes see if it can be saved or not but in fact it really isn't looking good to be honest I have a feeling that one may be too far gone. So I'm going to give that away as a freebie to someone. I wouldn't want to sell it because it is, it's is—it's been read and it's fallen to bits, unfortunately, and that's no good. But apart from that, it's its all there. It's just not really in a great state. And its it's certainly not worth um, spending time over because it's just not worth anything. Right. Now, interestingly, that this one's another one with that sticker in exactly the same point where the other one was. So let's tease this off. That's coming off a bit easier than the other one. Maybe the cover was a little bit shinier. It's left a tiny little residue there, but we'll do the same as we did last time and we'll put that to one side as one that's gonna need a little bit more special attention when we get to the polishing stage. Okay. So, if you're into Edgar Wallace, as you can see, it was one hell of a collection, wasn't it? It really, really was. It was basically everything that was on the shelves around this time. So it's really nice. If you're into arrow books as well, there's a few nice, nice arrows here. As I said, I don't mind them, but I don't collect arrow as a publisher because you know, you have to draw the line somewhere and they just don't have enough nice or they don't have enough authors that I'm into and attractive covers to boot to make me want to collect them, I'm afraid. 
But what I have got, like the Dennis Wheatley's, I've got a couple of Bram Stokers and a couple of the bits and bobs. Those I really do love, so I'll obviously keep those. But in fact, there we are. There's a Dennis Wheatley there to the Devil of Daughter. Fate Passports. But yeah, for 1957, over 60 years old, that... It's really nice, supple pages. They're quite um, quite clean on the whole as well, these. They've aged much better than most books that you find from this period. I'm perfect, they hardly need anything to do into them, these. Very lucky. Same thing again, sticker in the same point, Bigfoot. Yes, yeah, these late 60s ones. For some reason, I guess they must have come at this, you know, he must have bought them at the same time, possibly. I mean, who can tell? That sticker has not come off quite as easily. I left a little bit of residue there. But I've gone back over it with my thumbnail to try and pick up any sort of bits as I go along. And then time I add in a bit of polish as well, um, that will then take off any little hint that there was even a sticker there. So it's three that need the sticker treatment. All from a similar sort of period. This is... Uh, Mr. Reader in the Thames this is uh, from the TV adaption. Hugh Burden as Mr. Reader. Mr. Reader returns. Last few Edgar Wallace's now. There was loads, wasn't there? Must have easily been uh, 40 books or something. The Stranger Countess. It's a nice cover. Her own mother, a convicted murderess. The governor. Oh, and Gov. It's an original, 1965. Right, so let's give the tops of those ones a bit of a dust off. little plumes of dust coming off sort of the spine bits there nearer the spine you get the worse the dust seems to be I don't know why that is maybe that's just how it collects somehow you know Now, I don't know how many books are left in this guy's library, but I've done very, very well out of it. I've had lots of Agatha Christie's and a few more Pam books and miscellaneous things. I've had some nice penguins, which um, one of them I was particularly pleased to get, a Carter Dixon, which is one of the ones with the about 10 or so I needed to finish the first thousand. So I was really pleased to get those. But um, we shall have to have a look if there are any more. I'm obviously going to be all over it. Right, so we've got a few Hammond Inners now. Now, these are nice because they're Fontana books, but on the whole, they are reprints. But I'm not too fussed about these as long as they've got um, the nice early jackets on them. So this is number 16. Um, it's an early style jacket, but it's uh, I don't think any of these. I think there's maybe two or three first editions in the whole lot. So yeah, this came out as a Fontana in 54, but this edition is from 1961. So I'll probably, I probably will end up keeping this because it's got the earlier, ja earlier style jacket. Um, because I don't, I love the Fontanas. I've been getting into them lately, but I haven't got that many. So I probably will keep these. Um, this one's not bad. The land God gave to Cain, but this one has got some bent over corners, which I'd like to get out.
Now, Hammond Innes is not an author. I mean, he's supremely popular. I don't know how popular he is today, but back in the day, he, he certainly was. And even in the days when I was book selling in the early 90s, he was still selling. Um, there he is there on the back. Um, yeah, he still sold back then. Having not worked in the book trade, this is a first from 61. Having not worked in the book trade for about 10 years now, I couldn't tell you, but he certainly was a big name in his day in Britain. Just a few odd corners needing to be turned over. There we are. That's that one. So this one's a much more recent sort of eight number eight three two. This is a much more recent Fontana style. Whether this one is also a first or a reprint, I don't know. Yeah, six impression from nineteen sixty three. First issued in nineteen fifty five. So very much a later a later one there. But they'll be okay. Although I, I won't keep these because they are, you know, a bit too later impression wise. Um I'll probably put them all up in a probably in a little job lot. Someone can get get a bit of hammered in his in one hit and hopefully be happy. They're really nice, Nick. They're just nice period paperbacks, 50, 60 year year old paperbacks. So someone should be happy. This is more what I like, the earlier sort of style here. This is number 213, so this is once again almost certainly a reprint copy, but I don't mind because it's got the original sort of style. Yeah, second from 61, that one. Probably the first in that cover, which is okay. Trojan Horse, 647. Now, you may have seen on some of my videos lately, um, I've been collecting the hardback series, The Century Of, and, well, the momentous day has come where I've tracked down the last one I needed. This is a film tie, and that's Dirk Bogard there, Stanley Baker. How cool is that? Um, yeah, so I've finally got the last of the, the Hutchinson Century Of series that I needed. So expect a video on them very soon where I showcase the whole lot. This is nice. It's a pan title killer mine one of his most famous ones I'm not sure if this is the first or if this is a the reprint it has a great pan let's have a look here yeah this is the, so pan published this in 1957 but as you can see there it says new edition 1960 so this would have been the first with that sort of cover so it's although it's a reprint it's the first thus the first pan probably the first pan with this title uh, with this uh, series number rather, and the first pan with this uh, jacket. So consequently, as a pan collector, I do want that one because that's like a little variation. So that will definitely be uh, going in the old pan books collection for certain. And a few more here to do. The Mary Deer. This is a first from 59, so that's a first edition, number 297. So there were a few in here, a few first editions, and then a few earlier editions. Um, Madden's Rock, one of his famous ones, 776. It's a second from 1963. Atlantic Fury, number 1290. And later ones I'll be happy to keep if they're first and they're in excellent condition. So this one from 1966, I will keep that one because it's nice condition. It's still got the original advertising insert that's been read once and then stored. That's a nice copy of that, so I will keep that one. And the last one, Strange Land, which I know is another one of his most famous ones. Um, once again, looks pretty nice condition, but this is a fourth first issued in Fontana in 64 but this is the one the fourth edition from 67 right so let's give the tops of those a bit of a dust off so that's all the hammered in this and they all came in a collection as well from the same guy he's clearing out his uncle's books I did say to him look 
I'll just take all your paperbacks at a set price and uh, save you all the hassle. But I think he's just enjoying the fun of like selling them in bits and bobs, you know, so it's fine. Although I don't know quite how I would have handled another mega collection. I don't think it was anything, I don't think it's anything like the pan collection that we got earlier in the year, which I've still got several hundred, maybe about four to 500 books still to trade on. So as I said, I'm doing those through eBay as and when I get a chance. There we are. So that's everything cleaned. I didn't need to use my my trusty polymer rubber not once today. Not once. I used the glue a bit, didn't we? So the last stage of the process, literally the last step of the process, is just to uh, give the uh, the books a, 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 just a bit of a tidy, a bit of a, a dust off and polish with the cleaning cloth. So the three that we, these three here all had sticker residue in the top, top right corner. So those are the ones I'm going to focus on first. So I've got my soft cloth here. I'm just going to spray in the top corner there. Just put enough spray on to start melting the glue a little bit. Overdue some new Mr. Sheen, I have to say. But as and when, as and when. So here we are. All right, so I'm just gonna do this first one here. And already, that's pretty much done it. That's already got that glue right out, just like that. Didn't take long at all. These are all from the same sort of period, so I have a feeling, and they're ever so slightly more worn than some of the others, which makes me think that possibly these were picked up secondhand, and those stickers were maybe a, uh, a vintage secondhand bookshop's way of keeping an eye on it or pricing or whatever. Who can tell? Maybe for, from a market stall. But the main thing is, as expected, the residues just disappeared with one little, one little foul swoop, which is cool news. A little bit of marking on the front there, but once again, you know, they just come up lovely, don't they? So that's all good news. Last one which required a little bit of special attention is this one. It's just sort of around the area where there was residue of glue, which is there now. It's just sorted it lovely. Last thing I'm gonna do is buy a book and then I have loads of uh, stickiness on the back from a, a price sticker that's been removed. That's horrible, isn't it? There we are. So these have come up. These have come up really nice. You couldn't tell that there was a sticker on the back at all. And that's all that matters, isn't it? But yeah, they were a bit more worn, those ones. So I have a funny feeling they may have been through the second-hand market a little bit. Now, the rest of it then, we just need to give a pretty like gentle once over with this cloth. And I don't think they're gonna need a lot, to be honest. Certainly some of them aren't gonna need anything. So we'll just zip through. And uh, as we've discovered in the past, sometimes when we do this, it picks up all sorts of a invisible dust and dirt. And I think if I, I'm eventually going to be selling this on to somebody and or if the book is going to end up in my own collection I want it to be as good as possible you know um, in as good a shape as possible I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all 
so I shall just zip through and give all these the, uh, the once over and get them looking as nice as possible. Hastily stopping there because someone's turned up at the door. <laughs> as I film this, it's uh, half term in the UK. So the kids are off on the, on the break from school. So if you do hear some noises in the background, I don't think they're too bad, but my next door neighbours have got a couple of youngsters and they're off school. Uh, my son is out with his mates this afternoon. So he's not around and the dog's asleep. So at the moment, all is good. <laughs> but it can be quite difficult to find peace and quiet to film my videos. It's a nice copy of that one actually. I did actually film a video on my Fontana collection, which will be up on the channel by the time this goes out and I have to say I have become very much impressed with them with their list as a publisher and um, certainly their early stuff is really really nice and uh, they do sort of follow on directly from the Collins Collins titles as Collins because this is their imprint Fontana as the as the traditional sort of Collins wrapped up these then became the much more modern looking Fontana books and they are really nice I have to say and uh, they definitely did need to start introducing pictorial jackets because the, the look of the Collins paperbacks was getting very very old-fashioned at that time very generic so they needed to branch out and keep up with the likes of Pan and Harrow and some of the other publishers who were doing pictorial jackets. It was only Penguin that remained until the sort of mid 60s, until they eventually succumbed fully to uh, pictorial jackets. I to say, they do come up nice once they've been done. This one had a very faded spine. Can't do a lot about that once it's gone. It's gone and that bright red there. Look at that, boom. That, that bright red would have been all the way around that spine, it's just gone. But that is what happens if a book is left in the sun, unfortunately, and certain colors, reds and yellows, are particularly susceptible to fading. So here's another one that's faded a bit. It is what it is. As I said, I'll probably end up just popping these into a, a little job lot so someone can have the whole lot for a cheap price. As I uh, film this one, I was watching the latest video from Gary Lavisi over in America and he'd done a tribute to Richard Lupoff. Now Richard Lupoff was, uh, he died just a couple of days after Gary, or once Gary had filmed the video and I uh, don't know what he died of. He was 85 so he's quite a, an older gentleman but he had, um, he did a really nice sort of tribute to him. He was an author as well. I had a couple of books, or have a couple of books in my collection, including a really nice non-fiction one called The Great American Paperback, big coffee table book, which I have shown on the channel before. And uh, he wrote that one. And he also wrote one in the 60s on comic books called All in Colour for a Dime, which I've also got. And a very knowledgeable chap who used to go to Gary's show in, um, I think, LA. He did the LA paperback show. And uh, yeah, it's a really uh, real sad news. Real paperback authority, really. Very, very knowledgeable chap, but wrote lots of books on the subject as well. So he has left, he sort of passed his information along, as it were, you know. 
Yeah, sadly, just the one pan today. <laughs> Still lots that I need in the G series. So that's one big pile done. As you can see, these don't need a lot, but they do just need a little bit. So I'm just zooming by, zooming through. Yeah, I'm looking as, as good as possible here. really no science to doing this it's just the trick is really just not to put too much polish on and the books will be fine they do come out really nice really sort of gleaming you know All of these have got, they're not overly glossy, but they've got like a semi glossy front and back cover. And what that means is you are able to put the polish on without fear of damage in the book. Obviously I wouldn't sort of recommend this matte covered books because you would risk damage in them. But for these ones with a slightly semi-glossy cover, nothing to worry about at all. They're absolutely fine. It's funny, so many of these titles I do recognise because they were then later published by Pan, so it must once again have just been one of those rights things where Pan had the rights for a little while, and then, uh, or Hodder rather, had the rights, and then they moved to Pan. I wonder who owns them now. I would imagine if some of these were written in 1926, like the one we saw earlier, they may not even be in copyright anymore, and they may be out of copyright, in which case, Pretty much anyone can do their own edition of them, but as I said, they're so dated, some of these Edgar Wallaces, now it really would be in the hands of collectors who'd want to have a new edition of them, because they're very common, I think, you know. can't imagine you'll have a job getting any particular one. Maybe certain editions might take a bit of time to track down. Some nice ones. I think I like some of the arrow ones. I do like the early sort of the hotter yellow jackets. I think they're really nice. Um, not such a fan of like these sort of TV ones. We had a few of them recently with uh, the John Creasy collection, which came from uh, exactly the same source. bit marking on the back of this one because it's white it shows up the covers the dirt a bit more I like this jacket the frightened lady that's nice right that's another pile down that's over half of them polished now easily obviously some of the later ones don't need anything at all because they're lovely it's lovely isn't it? nice jacket that one but some of these are really really great i have to say so Okay, now we got these really early, early ones. Now, these are ever such, these aren't so glossy because they're older. They're not made from the same sort of cover. So it's important to make that distinction more than anything else because you don't want to go crazy with the polish on these. So I am going to go steady. They still, they still have a gloss to them. It's just not as much as the other ones. So I'm just going a little bit lighter just to 
Let's see how these ones come up. In actual fact, they're coming up very nice indeed. Yellow is almost as bad as white in the way it picks up dirt and dust and fingerprints. As, you, uh, as I said earlier, a few people have been watching the videos now with a view to uh, listen, almost listening to them for their for the, like, the sounds of cleaning and the ASMR sort of tingles. Now, I was reading the comments on that Forbidden Planet video, which I admit, having to do repair that book, it was a bit of a messy old process. And you'll notice, like on here, I've created lots of debris on the cardboard here, so I wipe it off. So someone suggested, <laughs> made me laugh, new drinking game. Have a drink every time Jules wipes the cloth. Like, sh like that. All I can say is you'll be drunk in about 10 minutes because I wipe the dirt off quite a bit, <laughs> particularly on the uh, earlier dirty books. See, this was a very early one. It was C35 in the series number, which is pretty early, isn't it? Oh, that's that one, C35. Nice cover, that one. Crimson Circle. And I suppose if you collected these, you know, obviously you're going to want every single one. And, you know, they do have, you see that down the bottom, that's the little series number. C for crime and then 202. I think that's probably what that is. So when I started collecting books, the appeal of something like Penguin with a straight numbering system starting at number one was highly, highly appealing to somebody like me who had grown up collecting comics and trying to have every issue of a comic, for example. You know? There's another area. Let's see the C34 there. So that was part of the attraction of books for me, I think, you know. Um, right. A few more here. So these uh, James Herberts. Now these are fine. These are so shiny you could pop a bit straight on the front because it's like really glossy and not have to worry at all about making a mess. But in actual fact, these weren't too bad condition. They were just, they're just a little bit sunned and red, but they are first editions and they're scarce. They're published by New England Library, which the, the now books are in themselves quite collectible. And certainly the rats was one of his most famous ones, wasn't it, along with the fog. Certainly as a young kid, there would always be a gratuitous sex scene in, in each of his books. That was part of the attraction, of course. <laughs> Lovely. And my uh, friend of mine called Johnny Maines got to interview Herbert just before he passed away. He said, Johnny's a horror author. I am still hoping to get him onto the channel at some point so we can talk about horror in general. He uh, These don't need anything. They find the horror case crimes. He is an uh, expert on the Palm Book of Horror Stories. That's, you could say, his specialty. Uh, he's researched it, gone through all the files... I think he had the files of Herbert Van Thal, who was a, edited the series. But he's a busy chap, a writer as well. I don't know if he watches the channel, but he is in the same town as me, so it would be great if I could get him over for an interview at some point. So, Johnny, if you are watching this, I hereby cordially invite you to come over 
when you're able, and we'll uh, have a sit down, and we'll talk Pound Book Horror Stories. Johnny, I believe, has got a couple of covers, original covers. I don't know if he's still got them, but he certainly had the cover to, um, I think it was the very last Pound Book Horror Stories, number 30, which has got the Stephen King story in. And he had the original jacket to that. I think it contains the, is it the Lawnmower Man? He had that one. I remember seeing it. When I was around his house, it was framed up. I thought, wow. I've got some good stuff. Here's the odd Doctor Who. Seeds of Death, a Patrick Tratton story by Taron Sticks, who also sadly passed away earlier this year. Probably the author I read the most of when I was growing up. Met him several times over the years at Doctor Who conventions. A really, really nice chap. Uncle Terry. <laughs> Right, last little batch. And we're almost at the end of another month of uh, book pickups. A lot of this is not for me, though, I have to say. I, I'm putting a little caveat in there in that some of this is for me, but it's not all for me this time. I have got some of this just to uh, grab a few bits for myself, and the rest is going to be sort of uh, sold on on eBay just to uh, clear the decks, but I got a few bits out of it that I wanted, which was the main thing. But still fun to see it all. And thankfully, it didn't require masses of work, did it? It was enough to... They were all pretty clean copies on the whole bar. A little bit of gluing wasn't there, so it wasn't too bad at all. So coming up book-wise then, um, I have pulled out, because I've got some new bookcases, I've given me a bit more, myself a bit more room and I've pulled out all my miscellaneous sort of UK and USA publishers, um, of which they're sort of A to Z, um, and they're going to be in two or three parts. So it'll be like UK publishers, a to Z, probably in a couple of videos. And I'm going to go through, I am going to clean them while I go through them because they're basically, they're not very, they've never been gone through properly. It's just stuff I've picked up over the years. Some of it's perfect, some of it needs a good clean. And I'm going to do the same again with my American, miscellaneous American publishers, sort of A to Z. So not ones that I've got hundreds and hundreds of, like, you know, Pan Books or something, or even Fontana, where I've got like a you know, 100 plus books. It's ones that I've got maybe 10 or 20 of a publisher. Uh, not really a collection, it's just what I've picked up over the years uh, from various sources and they're sort of filed away like that. So those videos are coming up. Um, I've got a particular one on Agatha Christie covers by Tom Adams. That's going to be coming up. But I'm missing a few still, so I'm going to try and get a few more. In fact, I'll try and get them all under my belt before I do that video, so that may not come until next year. Obviously, I've got the next 100 pound books, so I just recently put up Great Pans 401 to 500, so we're we doing 501 to 600. Great Pans 501 to 600, they're coming up. I've also got the last Penguin video of the original thousand, so it's going to be Penguins 901 to Penguin 1000. That's a bit of a landmark. And I have been requested, I am going to do this, I'm going to put all 10 videos together into one mega video, which will be about six hours long. And that's going to have all the first thousand Penguin books in it, in one long video. Um, all the music and stuff edited out. No internal adverts, it will just be a six hour bonanza. <laughs> For anyone who wants to sit down and fall asleep to that, of which there could be many. But if you wanted to watch a video and see the first thousand penguin books, you're going to be able to do it, which I think will be pretty cool. Obviously, once the first thousand is done, I am going to carry on, but I haven't got them anything like as complete after the first thousand. But I'll just do them in batches of a hundred or so as we go along up to the end of my run, which is at three thousand and a bit. So up to penguin three thousand. So by having concentrated on later ones like that only sort of nice artwork titles and things like that so that'll be enough to do so 
sorry, that's a glimpse of what's coming up. Oh, I'm going to be doing two videos on the Giles books, the Giles annuals, which I've just completed. So they'll be good. Definitely a video on the Hutchinson Century of series. They're coming up, which I've also just completed. So quite a bit book related on the horizon. Anyway, that's all that lot. So let's uh, pause there. We'll pull the camera out and we'll have a have a look and see what they see what they look like. So there you go. I hope you have enjoyed that look at my October pickups. Certainly an interesting bunch of books this month. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage paperback content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.